Did you know that chronic kidney disease, CKD, affects over 37 million adults in the U.S., and many don't even know they have it? According to the National Kidney Foundation, managing CKD from stage 3 to 5 can significantly slow its progression and improve quality of life, but only if you take the right steps at the right time. Imagine understanding exactly what to do at each stage to protect your kidneys and improve your overall health. This video will guide you through proven methods tailored for every stage of CKD. Stay with us until the end, and you'll gain invaluable insights to take control of your kidney health and enhance your well-being. Discover Tip 7 right away, a simple yet life-changing solution. This is a special vitamin that can delay dialysis for years. It may sound unbelievable, but in a groundbreaking clinical trial involving more than 15,000 stage 3 and 4 CKD patients, supplementing with this vitamin alongside ACE inhibitors reduced the rate of kidney function decline by 44%. That's right, you heard it correctly. A small supplement yet it could delay dialysis for up to 15 years, or even longer for some people. Understanding your kidneys' needs is the key to taking control of your health and, potentially, avoiding dialysis altogether. First and foremost, the vitamin that anyone on ACE inhibitors should always take is folic acid, also known as vitamin B9. Why? Because 0.8 mg of folic acid per day has been shown to slow CKD progression by 44% in a study involving 15,100 participants. But what if you're already in stage 4 or 5? Honestly, if you're at this advanced stage, you shouldn't expect miracles from folic acid. It's beneficial, but it's not powerful enough to turn back time. Instead, you should discuss with your doctor whether your ACE inhibitors are still effective or are causing more harm than good. Studies show that ACE inhibitors and ARBs lose effectiveness in advanced stages of CKD. At this point, stopping ACE inhibitors might be a better option. Why? Because as the disease progresses, side effects like hyperkalemia, excessively high potassium levels in the blood become more common. In summary, if you're in the early stages, don't forget to get enough B vitamins, especially folic acid. But if the disease has progressed, be proactive in talking to your doctor about finding a more suitable solution for your health. There's a small but highly effective trick to keeping potassium under control, and that's sodium bicarbonate. Yes, it's like a magic remedy that can help you manage your potassium without having to give up delicious foods like bananas, avocados, or potatoes. To enjoy these foods comfortably, your potassium level needs to be under 5 milliequivalents per liter. So, how do you lower potassium if it gets too high? The answer depends on the stage of CKD, chronic kidney disease, you're in. Stage 3 CKD, metabolic acidosis at this stage, high potassium levels are often linked to metabolic acidosis, especially in those with diabetes. Sodium bicarbonate not only helps protect your kidneys from acid but also lowers serum potassium levels. So, if your doctor tells you to limit potassium and you're in stage 3 CKD, ask them to check your bicarbonate levels or CO2, if you're familiar with that term. This simple step can help slow down the progression of CKD. Stage 4 to 5 CKD, pay attention to medications if you're in stages 4 or 5 of CKD, ACE inhibitors or ARBs might be the cause of your high potassium levels. In this case, adjusting the dose or replacing them with another medication should be the first step. That said, you should also know that these medications are still very effective in slowing disease progression in stage 3. Nowadays, there are medications like Lokelma, recently approved to effectively lower potassium with very few side effects. 
Trust me, this is much easier than giving up bananas and tomatoes. Have an open conversation with your doctor to find the best plan for you, because your health always deserves to be a top priority. Tip 5. Let's talk about something really important, why you should consider adding bananas and potatoes to your diet, fiber. Avoiding high-fiber foods will not benefit anyone with CKD, chronic kidney disease. In fact, the opposite is true. For people with CKD, fiber is a key way to help detoxify excess toxins in the body. So, how do you add more fiber to your diet at all stages of CKD? Here's something not many people know, but fiber, whether from food or supplements, can actually slow down the progression of CKD. Let me share a little secret for stage 3. One of the first things I recommend to my stage 3 CKD patients when it comes to fiber is psyllium husk. When it comes to managing CKD, psyllium husk does more than you might expect. It helps control cholesterol, promotes gut health, supports diabetes management, aids in weight loss, reduces inflammation, and has many other benefits. Honestly, you'd be crazy not to try it, right? However, I wouldn't recommend this supplement to patients in stages 4 or 5 of CKD. The reason is simple, you need to drink plenty of water when using it. Every time you take psyllium husk, you need to mix a few teaspoons of fiber into a large glass of water. You can't take it without water, so it's not the best option for someone with fluid restrictions. It wouldn't be safe. Which fiber supplements are safe for people in stages 4 or 5 of CKD? If you're wondering about the best options, I truly recommend acacia fiber. It's not just a powerful detoxifier, but it also brings benefits similar to psyllium husk. And the best part? You don't need to drink a massive amount of water with acacia fiber to make it safe. A small amount of water to dissolve it is all it takes, which is a game changer for patients with water restrictions. In short, the fiber you consume daily is directly linked to your kidney function. The more fiber you get, the healthier your kidneys will be. So, make sure you're getting enough fiber every day, and consider adding acacia fiber or psyllium husk to your routine. Tip number 4 let's talk about something that can truly make a big difference, not just in slowing down kidney disease, but also in improving kidney function, the kidney-friendly diet. You've probably heard that limiting protein and increasing the intake of fruits and vegetables are two of the main pillars of this diet. Should you completely eliminate meat, fish, dairy, and eggs when you're at stage 3 of CKD? It's not as simple as you might think. Stage 3 CKD includes a range of kidney functions, so not all stage 3 patients are the same. Some patients are newly diagnosed with kidney disease around a GFR of 60, which is the threshold where CKD can officially be diagnosed. So, they're just entering the world of kidney disease. Yesterday, their GFR was over 60 and fatty fish were their go-to. But now, with a GFR below 60, it's time to say goodbye to fatty fish. Instead, eat lots of leafy greens. So, if a patient asks me what they can do to manage their CKD and their GFR is under 60, I'll always tell them to follow a diet that avoids meat, fish, dairy, and eggs. If one day you want to tell me, or your doctor, or anyone, that your health has improved, this is where I would start. But what about stages 4 and 5, you ask? Should patients in those stages be just as strict? Oh yes, even stricter. They should take it a step further and consider adding keto supplements to help protect against malnutrition. In short, any patient with kidney disease should start a low-protein, plant-based diet if their goal is to improve their condition at any stage. Now let's talk about number 3. Let's revisit vitamins for a moment, 
because they do more than just counteract the side effects of medication. No, they can do so much more for you, like protecting you from anemia. Now, let's explore one of the most overlooked complications of CKD, anemia. Everyone has anemia. And still, so many people aren't receiving the treatment they need. If you have CKD, your chances of having anemia are over 50% if you're male and over 70% if you're female. So, how can you make sure that anemia doesn't reduce your chances of kidney recovery? First, make sure you're getting your iron and hemoglobin levels checked. We've already established that CKD patients are more likely to have anemia than not. But why most CKD patients still aren't being properly tested for this condition remains a mystery to this day. So, what can you do to ensure that anemia doesn't hinder your kidney recovery? First, check your iron and hemoglobin levels. Second, consider adding vitamin B, vitamin C, and even iron if your test results indicate a need. And here's some good news for you CKD patients today. Kidney-friendly multivitamins are as easy to find as unwanted health advice on the internet. Before, finding a kidney-friendly multivitamin was quite difficult. However, it's very important because you need a multivitamin designed specifically for your kidneys, one that doesn't contain vitamins A, E, or K, that has exactly 6 micrograms of vitamin B12, 60 milligrams of vitamin C, 300 micrograms of biotin, and 1,333 micrograms of folate. This is what we call a kidney-friendly multivitamin, and it could be a game-changer in preventing anemia, along with providing many other benefits. There are many brands that offer these supplements, Arena Vite, Nephrite, Perino Plus, Pure Vite, these are all safe options. Do patients with stage 4 and 5 CKD need these multivitamins? Yes, all CKD patients need them, especially if they are on a low-protein diet. Many patients have suffered from anemia for so long, it feels like waiting in line at the DMV without receiving any treatment. In such cases, simply supplementing with vitamins and iron may not be enough. For patients in stages 4 and 5, additional erythropoiesis-stimulating agents and iron supplementation are often required. It seems that every CKD patient is dealing with anemia, and none of them are being treated for it. I may be underselling the problem here. About 70% of women with CKD across all stages are suffering from anemia meaning almost every woman in stages 4 and 5 is experiencing this serious, treatable condition. It's actually quite rare to see a patient who's receiving proper treatment. So please, make sure you're getting the appropriate care. Don't let anemia be the reason you end up needing dialysis. I understand that erythropoiesis-stimulating agents and iron injections can be expensive, and your insurance might not be on board with that, but they are certainly worth far more than the entirety of your life. Let's take a look at tip number two. Let's talk about the vitamin everyone loves, vitamin D. For people with CKD, getting enough vitamin D is not just important for keeping your teeth and bones strong. Vitamin D is also crucial for protecting the kidneys from protein in the urine and high blood pressure along with many other benefits. So, how should you take vitamin D if you're in stage 3? Take about 25 to 50 micrograms of vitamin D every day, that's 1,000 to 2,000 IU, and make sure you're also getting 100 micrograms of vitamin K2 and a little magnesium. Seriously, this combination will cover all your needs. Should you take these supplements in stages 4 and 5? You see, magnesium is something the kidneys tend to excrete. While buildup isn't common, I still want to see a magnesium blood test before anyone in stages 4 or 5 starts taking these supplements. But that doesn't mean magnesium supplementation isn't helpful. 
Now, when it comes to vitamin D, things get a bit more complicated. Low vitamin D is a common complication of CKD because the kidneys can't activate enough of it anymore. So, while increasing vitamin D intake might help, patients in stages 4 and 5 may need a more activated form of vitamin D. That's why it's important to talk to your doctor and make sure they check your vitamin D levels at least once a year, at least. And that you're getting the right treatment. Now, let's dive into tip number one for today. The first tip I want to share with you is how to use water to help lower your blood pressure. How can water help you manage your blood pressure, you ask? Well, water and blood pressure are closely connected. When you drink enough water, your blood pressure will become more stable. If you're in stage 3, you'll want to reduce the amount of water your body is holding on to. And you know what? The simplest way to do that is by drinking more water. That's right, you'll actually fight water retention by giving your body more water. One of the most common reasons your body retains water is because of too much sodium. For those with kidney disease, doctors often recommend limiting sodium intake to just 1.6 grams per day. Even a single salted peanut can be packed with sodium. So, how do we get rid of that excess sodium? Simple, with water. When your body has plenty of water, it helps flush the sodium out. So, make sure you're drinking enough water and doing it consistently. What about those of you in stages 4 and 5? For these individuals, when the kidneys can't remove enough water, managing the amount of water in your body becomes extremely important. Keeping your water intake under the prescribed limit is key to controlling your blood pressure. Remember, the more water in your body, the higher your blood pressure. But this issue becomes more serious when your kidneys can't remove enough water, right? So, if your doctor has prescribed diuretics, be sure to take your medication properly and only drink the amount of water your kidneys can handle. We've reached the end of today's journey. If you found the content helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any upcoming videos. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for taking the time to watch. See you in the next video. Have an amazing day.